What's up scavengers, and Scandinavia here. Today we're going to make a brand new moss vivarium, as well as inhabit it with my ever-growing Fedoli Palidola colony. This colony has been with me only since last year, but oh boy have they grown a ton in that short time. They completely devour anything alive I give them. These guys I usually feed flightless fruit flies, as you can see in these clips. It truly amazes me how such tiny ants can take down a fly more than twice its own size. It's also great in my opinion to vary the food you give your ants. And since these guys clearly enjoy fruit flies, I never hesitate to give them some. All my other species who are also smaller than the fruit flies have never taken them down like these guys. I usually feed my Campanotus, Polarachis and sometimes my Myrmica for the fruit flies, since their body size easily can overpower the fly. But even though these guys are far smaller than the flies, they still go for them even if they're alone. It's amazing how ferocious Fedoli they are, which is why I love them so much. Anyhow, let's get to building their new vivarium. Fidoli are known to escape even though you have a barrier, so I decided to add a plastic lip to this aquarium, to be even more safe on them not escaping. I did not record me doing that since I didn't know if it would work. The reason being that naturally, aquarium silicone don't adhere that good to plastic, and even worse when it is over such a small area as the edge of an aquarium. So I went out of my way to find a way to fix that problem, and I found this to work out great, Sika Multiprimer. This stuff makes the acrylic adhesive to the silicone, but be careful, it is very flammable and toxic, as well as be sure to apply it only on the exact area of where you want the silicone to go, since it also takes away the clearness of the acrylic. Other than that, it works fantastic. Okay, so now to the actual vivarium build. As you know, with all small vivariums, a drainage layer is needed. The reason being, the excess water gets drained down in this non-bioactive layer, preventing plant roots from rotting as well as overwatering. The drainage layer should however be moist, simulating a deeper soil, making a moisture gradient in the actual soil to promote natural growth of the plants. As you saw in the clip, I used perlite as a drainage layer and added a cloth to separate it all. Now to the soil mix. Since I wanted this to be a mossy vivarium, as well as me having the Fedoli colony in it, I figured to go with a soil containing mostly clay. Clay collected from outside, that is. This is because the moss don't have any roots like normal plants, so they will not need the soil nutrients that deep down, or the air pockets. I did however include some layers containing other soil, made from mostly different types of peat and wood pieces. This is since I will have some normal plants in the setup, as well as it providing adequate nesting spaces for the ants. Since these ants are so small, their chambers will be small as well. That is why I chose to compact the soil as much as I did, to prevent the chambers from caving in when they dig, potentially trapping root. Since these ants are so small, they will have no problem at all digging in this super compact clay mixed soil, so no worries there. Having the soil compacted somewhat is, in my opinion, good in any vivarium. This is because that's what it is in nature. As well as having the soil compacted means that you actually have more soil in the setup, and more soil means more nutrients for the plants. As you saw in the clip, I chose to create a slope in the soilscape, making the terrain more dimensional. Now, let's start with the actual scape. I went out and collected a ton of different cool plants and mosses. I chose mostly smaller plants, but did also take some grass, as well as a bit larger moss species too. I also found some cool mossy sticks for the hardscape. I spent a lot of time making and designing the scape, so I did not bother recording it all. However, I can go over what went through my mind when building it. So first of all, I wanted to have a big prominent feature of the scape. As in a smaller tank like this, having only small objects makes it look very plain and flat. So I added this big stick, as well as digging it down a bit. Then I wanted this lower, other side, to have some bushy back areas. Since the tank was so small, I could not have large plant back there, since that would risk the plants growing up and eventually touching the lip, risking the ants to escape. I therefore chose to have some larger bushy moss species in clumps back there. I then went on to placing out a ton of smaller patches of moss and mini plants in the soil, moving forward towards the front of the vivarium. When planting mosses directly into soil like this, you have to think of the soil it is in. Mosses need very compact soil, that's another reason I use clay. This is because they need so much moisture to grow. Also, be sure that they are in firmly contact with the soil or whatever they are going to be planted on, since they need to have good contact to collect the water they need. That's why you see me pushing down on the moss all the time. I felt like the middle area around the stick needed some more bushiness, 
so I added some grass. I don't know if the grass will do well or not, but we can at least hope so. After watering the vivarium a bit, I decided to add some aquarium rocks in a sort of pathway in the middle, with two larger smooth green rocks at the ends. And after that, it was finished. I am really proud how this turned out. I love the moss patches and the mini plants scattered all around the foreground. It gives the entire vivarium a sense of age. The right side of the vivarium, with more bushy moss in the background, will probably look even cooler when the ants are in. Talking about the ants, let's introduce them. They were currently held inside this setup, an ants Australia nest hooked up to a simple outworld with sand. At least that's how it was supposed to be. These guys are so incredibly skilled builders, so they managed over time to make an entire nest in sand out of just 2 or 3 millimeters of sand. Incredible. Not only that, but one time I forgot to water their nest for a week, making them all move out into the test tube that I had placed in the outworld if something like that would happen. After they moved into that test tube, they kinda just stayed there, more or less. So I decided to embrace their decision and started watering the outworld. I always had in mind that I would make a vivarium either way, so it didn't bother me too much that they live in there. Anyhow, now it was time to move them, which was gonna be a much, much harder task now that they were nested in the outworld, under the sand. But if you put your mind to it, anything goes. So, I started with placing the test tube into the vivarium, but quickly realized that I hadn't even applied any barrier yet, so I applied a thick and good layer of olive oil all around the lip. After that, I disconnected the nest, since they actually used the real nest as a sort of satellite nest, having some brood inside. The workers that was inside the nest instantly started exploring their new awesome setup. But I had other things in my mind. I had to get the rest of the colony inside ASAP. I had a rough idea of where the main chamber should be, so I used a brush to try to locate it. Looking back, I should have started by moving the workers that were out and about, but instead I wanted to secure the queen so that she would not get hurt by me brushing in the sand. I dug and dug, knowing that any second I could find the queen. I flipped another pebble and realized that that had to be it, the main royal chamber. Whilst the workers were so hyper defensive, I figured to use their defensive bites to move them into the vivarium. So I agitated some of them to bite the brush and repeated it over and over, shaking them off into the new vivarium. But then I decided to go for the queen. So I opened the chamber and there she was hiding among her brood piles. I got a bit startled, thinking that I might have hurt her, but to my relief she was moving fine. Now it was time to move her, and I was stupid enough to not have a plan for that. I think I was thinking somewhat that she would also bite onto the brush so that I could carry her over, but she obviously wouldn't do that, since that's a stupid and risk-taking behavior for a queen to do. I really tried to getting her to maybe crawl up the brush, but I didn't succeed. Then I got some entomology tweezers and just grabbed her. I was so scared to hurt her doing this, and my trembling hands didn't make it easier. Okay, let's pause here. I wanna say that these are very special tweezers. They are not solid at all, as you can see they flex a lot, making them safe to pick up insects with, without harming them. 
Do not ever do this with just any old tweezer, since it might actually crush them. Now back to the video. I finally got the perfect grip over her thorax and moved her as quick as possible into the new vivarium. I did not get her on camera, scurrying away with some escorting workers, but I knew she was safe now. Now to the most tedious part of the entire move. Moving the workers and brood. I used the brush just as I did previously, agitating the workers and then moving them over. And honestly, after a while I got pretty good at it. But moving an entire colony, worker by worker, egg by egg, took some time as you might realize. I think I spent over 3 hours or so, looking for brood in the sand, moving them one by one. But then, they were finally all inside the vivarium. Awesome. And look at that, they were already constructing their new nest. I wish I could be that productive. The test tube were now empty, so I decided to remove it. I let the nest stay inside for the night, if they still had some eggs inside, or perhaps needed to chill out under it during the construction of the new nest. But the day after, I brushed off the sand and removed it. And look at that, only one day and they had already come this far? Damn, such a productive species. Looking around the vivarium, I found plenty of more nest entrances. It was truly amazing to see them in a more natural setup, digging away into the soil. I fed them some honey, and boy did they seem to love it. And the barrier seemed to work perfect for anyone wondering. Very few got over the vertical barrier, but when they hit the upside down lip, they all fell right off. Fedoli are amazing ants to keep always up to something, and with their amazing polymorphism. I just love them. Well, that was it scavengers. A successful move of my Fedoli Palidola colony. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you follow me on my Instagram, at ants underscore Scandinavia, you would have known about this project from some time now. So if you don't already, go follow me there. And also, we recently hit 6000 subscribers. So thank you so much for that as well. Hope you all will have a brilliant day. And I will see you scavs next time. Bye!